Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line, coast to coast. You're fired, Anderson. All right, what's up, you guys? This is Loveline. Uh, Ace Marcola is not here. My main man, Mayonnaise, he's still on vacation doing something. I'm Striker. In Europe. Damn. Yeah. That goes everywhere. For a car show. Striker. Car show. Thank you. That's if better you were like literally that. literally a millionaire, you too could go to Europe. If I was literally a millionaire, right. I too could go to Vegas yeah. Oh, yeah. and spend it at Olympic Gardens. Nice. In front of me, three... <sighs> Fourth. That would be my mother. It is? <laughs> yeah, she's here. I thought I saw her outside. Yes. I gave her a five. <laughs> five cents? <laughs> five Price dollars. Price has gone five times. <laughs> that is Thomas DeLong in front of me. DeLong from Boxcar Racer, also from Blink-182. And then... Uh, Thank you. Uh, Anthony. Anthony's here. And David. And David's very shy. He's not... Uh, he just, he just. You guys didn't give him a mic. Apparently, I, well, you got. I got, you got two. Mics. two mics. Yeah, you have two. Well, mics. no. Well, kids like to hear those aren't stereo. Break that. Break that beat down. Now no, I'm. I, I, is I this stereo? Multiple intimate details about it David. Was. You're going to? <laughs> no, I already have. <laughs> I, I, learned, I learned his dietary <laughs> habits and. Uh, well, the thing is, is uh, usually you guys take calls from people outside. You know, like the, the city, the building. But we're going to be calling you from within the building <laughs> about <laughs> our own band member. About each other. About oh, about other. one. Oh, he's the he's the one. Well, he's doing no. He's like healthy, but we think that uh, there's a hole in his heart, and he's trying to fill it <laughs> with uh, protein shakes. No, what, pro- what kind of protein? Uh, it's just, yeah, the, it's the simple whey protein. It's just simply because I am <clears throat> vegetarian. It's a quick like fix kind of semen. Like, I said semen, semen, and you still went on and answered it. No, is this your Did own you know, semen? To... No, no, no. He no, we're we're both so. we're both vegetarians, but he's actually a lot healthier than I am. But he always like takes his like shakes with him, or right. Like, we went surfing the other day, yeah. and he's like, damn, I'm like, what? This is a good story. <laughs> Why are we talking Because about this is a good story. We went surfing the other day, yeah. don't tell and he's like, he's like damn. I'm don't. like, what? He's all, nothing. I'm all, what? I dig it out. I'm he's all, I left my peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the top of the car. And I'm all, dude, I'm all, I'll go make you one. And it wasn't like, no, don't worry about it. He's like, all right. <laughs> so we walked inside my house, and I'm like, how much peanut butter are you like? <laughs> I'm going to put it on there. You like grape jelly? You know, I like whatever. the way this has come back to haunt me, because it was a lot simpler than that. I know. So but stoked. I knew when so I made to make me a peanut butter I was. I was. But I knew when I was making it, I was like, this is going to be a good story later on for Loveline. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Oh, man. So how close are you to good surf, Tom, in your house? Um, right outside? Good surf. Uh, I'm about, uh, how far away am I? I'm You're forever. Like he lives out in the country. country. about 10 minutes. Okay. No, I had, not a, I had to move. Minutes. I would live right on the beach if I wasn't to be bugged. By people that want to kill me when right. I sleep. Apparently, that <laughs> happens when you're in a mu- when you're a musician and you sing love songs. Do people want to kill you. There's some people that want to kill me. Nice. We've had uh, creepy people in the past that like to drive up and down my driveway. Good, <laughs> and never good leave. times. So I moved further and further away from the beach, but uh, I'm not that far. About 10, 15 minutes. Oh, that's not that bad. It's I actually heard... like seven or eight miles, but they're windy roads. Close enough to make uh, peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah, and they and cl- I mean close enough to <laughs> eat one and keep you. I heard Mark, he, he Mark, can't, Mark was, just had a baby. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, so did Tom. Where, where have you, you know, been? Scott, Mark's wife was the booker for Loveline, the talent booker for Loveline, the TV show, for years. Yeah. We uh, we knew Sky before they did. I hope it's not your baby, is it? No. Okay. No, my baby's really cute, and I've been thinking it might be Dr. Drew's baby. I, it's like, well, Tom, <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, you're I, pretty I do cute, have Tom. something to I mean, tell you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? Um, yeah, no, she's awesome. That's good. She's and what, what's your baby? You know, if you want to reveal your baby's name, Geppetto. Geppetto. <laughs> <laughs> PB and J. <laughs> PB and J. DeLong. Because her name is Geppetto, and uh, I dress her up like a cricket. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> Very nice. All right, um, we're gonna take calls, but first, Boxcar Racer. You guys, uh, if you're watching TV later and you're gonna watch the Jay Leno Tonight Show, you guys are performing on there tonight. We'll be there and here at the same time. Uh, how'd that go? That is good. Um, it was rad. Really? It was fun? Fortunately, for the first time I've done a TV performance, this was in, the, in a key that was easier to right. sing in than the others. Not saying that I did it. Because there's only three, I, I think I might have even said it on the show before, there's only three things you can do. You can, you can be sharp, flat, or in tune, mm-hmm. or in key or whatever, and I'm never this third one, the in key one. I'm always like sharp or flat. There's only three you can be, and yeah. I never hit that third one. I don't know. But you did it okay tonight. Yeah, I think I no. think you did very well today. I think He's you did zero. really good. I think you I don't have to kiss up to him. The band's going well. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying to kiss up to him. I'm just, you know, just giving him his props. I know. All right. It is well, fun. We're going to talk about your band as the night goes on. I'm sure all the kids want to ask you guys a bunch of questions about uh, Boxcar Racer and the whole Blink thing. And where the hell is Travis? Is he in the building? He's coming. I don't know. He's oh, yeah. oh, yeah. He's, He's on his way. All right, he Travis, was move it. at a new book, a new, new band at the Troubadour or something. Yeah, yeah, Travis is like in oh 20, the transplants. Tra- he, yeah. he plays in the transplants. He he has a record label now. Uh, he did he just did a bunch of nude modeling last week for Zoo News or something. And nice. I saw those there. pictures. 
Actually, you scary. know what they did though? You know that that uh, that magazine PETA for the, the ethical treatment oh, yeah, of animals? Yeah, yeah. They sent over a, a mock-up of what they want him to do, and it's this guy that's naked, like with his arms around <laughs> his head, like he's in the shower, and it says, uh, beat your meat before you beat animals. Before or your some, meat beats you. Before your meat beats you, or something weird like that. It was so wow. rad. Is I'll he gonna like, do it? No, I'd uh, do it in a heartbeat. He said he was gonna do it. it. He, no, he's not. That's what he said. That'd be hot well, if he Well, he should do that. it. He should do it, but just not. Not in the mock-up that they have, not that. And not even say PETA, just put beat your meat on it. <laughs> to no, this. Or he should put that on his license plate. That would be a right, beat your meat to this. And just have a picture of him like that. Have you ever seen, have you seen, <laughs> hey, hey, stop. You, you know, the, there's, there's a meat packing plant up the street here. Right. Culver, Culver City Meat, Culver Meat. Oh. You know what their slogan is? No. You can't beat our meat. <laughs> it says it on oh, all their products. That's a good slogan. That's a good slogan. I like it. All right, let's. Like uh, David Leno would read. Yeah. I have mean, David Leno would read. You know? Jay Leno? Jay Leno. David Leno. Headlines? Yeah. All right, good, Drew. All right, it's 1 800 Love you can't 191. You like, can't articulate yourself any better than that. Nope. <laughs> Just like that. Where's that voice coming from? Amanda. Mm, hell. Hey. What's up? You're 17. Yeah. She's all thank you. Hang on. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I've gained a lot of weight in the last six or seven months. About. 30, 35 pounds. Hmm. How much did you start at before the 35 got added on? Well, I was 5'5", five, five, and I was about 130 pounds. So now you're 170. 165. Uh, 165. So what happened? You on medication? Yeah, I am. What medication? Well, I've been on just about every antidepressant there is. That's one of the unfortunate and rather common side effects of psychiatric medications is weight gain. But, you I know, but uh, they, the reason why I've been on so many is because they keep changing them, trying to get me to stop gaining weight. Right. And um, that's a nice, that's a good thing to try. Why to does do. that happen? It just you know our our appetite centers are are chemically set, and these just monkeying with the serotonin receptors and whatnot changes the appetite center. So you're hungry all the time, and you can't be satisfied. That's trivia. Yeah. So but anyway. So what's your question then? My question is, I mean. I've been stressing out over this weight thing for a long time, and I'm, you know, I've I've tr tried to make myself diet and exercise, and it's just so much added stress on top of everything else. Yeah. And I'm decided, kind of the other day, that I don't mind being fat, as long as like, you know, someone will, someone else won't mind, and you know, I can. Well, there's always going like to be someone out else. there that doesn't mind you for who you are, no matter, fat, skinny, you know, tall, short, or peanut butter and jelly before you go surfing. I right. mean, whatever. Yeah. There's always Well, there are exceptions. They just opened there a new club, something. actually, for, for fat, that. curvaceous women. Is that right? Yeah. Where? Uh, well, it's 2645 Overland at Boulevard. No, um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I but think I mean, there's like in two Los in Angeles, L.A., yeah. and uh, there's, they're going to start a chain of them, like so really for, big women. But is it like, big? Huh? But you mean dance clubs? Or you yeah, mean, dance clubs. Wait a minute. I mean strip clubs? Or no, dance clubs. Places, not strip people, clubs. Do you see what women can't go unless they're... No, any size woman can go, but they are catering to the men that like big women. So I the see. big women go, they know they're going to feel comfortable yeah, there. Everything's about that. creepy guys. Isn't that a bum out? Yeah. And we're all creepy and we still do it. You know, like all the things. Like, uh, girls have to go through the, the gnarliest stuff because guys are creepy. So they start creating, they have places where guys sit down and look at naked girls, like mm -hmm. boobs. Oh my God, and they flock there. Right. And then they have, they're all, hey, how about a dance club where, you know, women are overweight, you know, because there's going to be no, guys that like that, too. Not, no, no, it's not based upon that, I'm sure. It's probably just based upon the fact that overweight women can go and feel comfortable just being themselves as right. opposed to going like it's a competition. All right. No, but, like a but, but it's not for creepy but, dudes. But Tom has a point, is that the whole, well, that, yeah. the whole industry, whatever industry, whether you want to call it Anything. love or sex, is all about guys and their visual experiences. Oh, it's gnarly. And though the gnarliest thing is watch your lady... Walk somewhere and look at the guys. Look at her, like, right. and 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 it's just like, and look How, at yourself. Hey, wait, look at wait till, <laughs> hey, wait till it's your daughter. Oh my god! How's that gonna feel? Oh my, I don't know. Geppetto will be, uh, but you know, Geppetto's <laughs> gonna be <laughs> like. Pinocchio, my it god. can be just a natural like instinct for a man because you're looking at a pretty healthy young female that is. Don't try and ready clean to bear? It up. No, it's true. No, it's, like, it's, like it's a natural thing because you look at them as, as if they're healthy beings. That you know? is absolutely like, true. That you're you're you will automatically you will automatically. It is like not a, just that they're it's super cool sexy. if lions do it out in Africa. You know, right. but they humans do doing it. But humans do. But you know, I guess it's kind of the same it's reflex, same, huh? It's same. the same reflex. Except guys, that we we've sort of we, we make money off it now and stuff. Yeah, we we've cultivated to such an extreme in this in this country especially, and then we've denied that it's there. Yeah, and, and insisted that women do the same thing when they don't. Hey, yeah. look who look came who in. walked in. There's Travis, everybody from nice 61 different bands. How you doing? I'm doing well. Well, we're Excellent. sitting here talking. Now give him his mic. Give him well, a mic. This Tom. is okay. Tom, tell him what's well, going for, on. Well, there's this girl, and she's no, no, on. No, 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 Tom. What? 
Give him a mic. A share, dude. I want to be in stereo. All right. <laughs> Listen to this. There's a girl. She's There's very... this girl, and she's on she's on antidepressants. And one of the unfortunate things that those types of medications can alter the circadian rhythms of the serotonin. Hey, this no. <laughs> I almost sounded good for a second. No, but what it does Logan. is it you gain a lot of weight. So she gained a lot of weight. But this is the thing. Are you still there? Uh, she's on hold. She's on hold. She's on hold. Well. Yeah. Do they always feel hungry? I never sat. Do they have to eat? They, they eat, no, but it's hard when you really have a strong when you're hunger. Hungry. When you're, your, your appetite center has been set at a different place. It, try, it <laughs> wants to maintain your weight at a different place. Amanda's actually Weird. still there. Amanda, I think the coolest thing you said though is that you're okay with being a little heavy right now, and she and, just wants someone to love her. Right. Yeah. And, and there's def, there's I'm, someone I'm out there. I'm just wondering if I am gonna if if I don't really do something about this. Am I gonna end up like one of those old lonely ladies with like ten cats, like in her own house? You no, know? twenty cats probably. I guess it depends on um, if the medication does this trick or well, not. You get over it, or you see the no, right people. Or? No, it will that that will help her be able Don't to have a an effective here, relationship. Have, no, but uh, Amanda, a lot of this is up to you. You can choose not to be the the crazy cat lady. I mean, I can't if if I choose to stay overweight and less stressed out. <laughs> Am I gonna? Is that gonna mean that I'm not gonna find a person that that well, loves me? And the, wants these me? guys are stressing are, about it so much right now. You're not gonna find it. And you're gonna be one of those crazy ladies that walks around the supermarket giving everyone the evil eye. <laughs> I, I, you have a bunch I, of rock stars yeah. saying that. It, you, yeah, I think I think if if you're gonna do that, then uh, it's just more than a man's gonna love. You know, it's just more to love. <laughs> I just think I don't know. You know, and also this is the the biggest thing. Is at least for us, our whole basis of this kind of music is uh, being an individual and doing your own thing, and, not, and trying not to care too much about what other people uh, think or say. So I think it's just, you know, you you have goods and bads with what you're doing right now, and you got to take some of the bad with the good. That medication's going to help you out, and I guess there's some bad stuff too, but that's with everything. Amen, Karen. Hi. What's up? You're 14. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to ask Travis, how long did it take him to master the drums? Wow, I, I'm still trying to master the drums. Um, to this day, I still try to be better, and I practice every day, and try to be creative, whatever. So, so yeah, I'm not done yet. Not done yet, right? Uh-uh. This is the beginning. Does it take a long time? Yeah, it takes a little while to build up your coordination and like develop a style, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it just depends on how much time you spend with it, you know. Hey, I saw this um special on MTV where there was this kid tagging along. Is that your brother or something? Yeah, that's my nephew. He's a stud. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Why? You like him? No. Okay. Hook you out. <laughs> well, I was gonna, no, I was no gonna way. Hook you out. Whatever. I'm just being honest. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right, Karen. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Travis, you're in three bands right now, correct? Yeah, I am. And they're all kind of on. You know, you got the Blink side, and then you got the Transplants. Transplants. With Tim. Yeah. It's Armstrong. They're all totally different. Mm -hmm. Like crazy different. Like Transplants are over the top. Like. Talking about selling drugs and <laughs> and random stuff like hanging out with your friends and drinking too much beer. Where you know Blink, obviously my my first band and most important, uh, we sing about girls and relationships and, right. and and real life stuff. And then Boxcar is uh, Tom's darker side, my, my <laughs> darker, creepy, side my more experimental out. side. So the part yeah. that looks at women, it's good. Exactly. Yeah, but I just witnessed <laughs> the best band in the world right now. That's why I was late. Where? Who? Uh, I seen this band called the Kennison at the Troubadour. Oh, they I were thought, stupid. Uh, they were so good, it was ridiculous. They opened up for the used or played yeah. after the used? I thought it was right. like Wham. magical. I it thought was ridiculous. Wham got back together or something. Damn, yeah. I hope they do. We could go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> George Michael was, uh, was outside. <laughs> 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 Paul. Paul? Hello? What's up? You're 19 on with Boxcar Racer on Loveline? Hey. Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, uh, last weekend, I smoked quite a bit of opium. And I drove home from Washington back to Baltimore, and I started having crushing pains in my chest. Right. And I lasted for four hours. Good time. And uh, I was wondering if the opium could have caused that. Mm. Were you doing anything else? Any cocaine? Uh, no. Just opium. But I was uh, smoking, and I was uh, also smoking marijuana, and I was drinking. What does opium do? What's the effect of that? Opium's heroin. It's all the same thing. It's oh. just another opiate, and uh, you can smoke it just like you can smoke heroin. And that got you across the country driving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. <laughs> and no, opium, in wow. fact, if anything, usually would would sort of uh, mask symptoms of a heart attack. And yeah, because it's like a painkiller. Right. And we actually give opiates when somebody's having a heart attack. Yeah, and, yeah. And, like, and it's not yeah. something that causes that unless your respirations are so suppressed that you're not oxygenating. So that's not an opium-type effect. However, uh... No, nor is it marijuana particularly, and nor is it alcohol. So you have to wonder if there's some stimulant there. There's usually cocaine or, or uh, amphetamine that does that kind of thing. 
No, I've been on stimulants for a while. But Paul, you've got big time addiction going on here, and you're gonna have to deal with that eventually. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And now that you're graduating to opiates, which is the most serious form of addiction, uh, the recidivism is high. The probability of living to 40 is low. It's something that you got to deal deal with. Okay. Yeah, I'm not actually a habitual user. Actually. Yeah, but you're I'm an you're an a, you're an addict, and you've graduated, and it'll be game on. Trust me. How do you, yeah? How do you not be? Well, when you're an addict, you, you, but you're, well, you can be. But he's an addict. Now he's an addict. He's been already it's too strong. I, I can't. I don't. You've never heard of. But success. You're, you're not an addict, though. You know. There's That's never, when you like, like max out, right? With heroin. That's like the gnarliest thing. It's you just can the do. hardest thing to stop. Actually, it's not the most dangerous or the most addictive, but it just has the highest recidivism. People can't stop it. What's the most yeah. addictive then? Probably cocaine. Really. Really. Yeah, but but again, the most <laughs> serious form of disease of addiction is to opiates. Yeah, you never see a success story. In that. I mean, well, I mean, people getting off, whatever. But like, you never hear about people like doing it and their life being fine and cool. Oh, they just—I'm just, just doing, a little, just casually doing opium. You never, no, never. There's no casual heroin. Is it true cigarettes are harder to quit than uh, heroin? When they've gone into centers and done questionnaires on to heroin addicts and asked them which would be more difficult, giving them cigarettes or heroin, they'll say cigarettes, but it's not. not wow. So, Brian, it's bad though. Brian, what's uh, up, man? You're 15. Hey, wow, Adam. Uh, Drew, I mean, he got a great show. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Striker's here. Yeah, yeah hey, Striker. Hey, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Brian, I'm going to have to put you on hold for another 26 <laughs> minutes there. All right, where are we going here? Uh, okay, it's a question for you guys. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry. Uh, what's up, Boxcar Racer? Hello what's there, Adam. Paul, you're like my idol. Like, seriously. <laughs> Dang it, dude. Like, what? Do you, like, what? <laughs> it's just a little scary. It's not it's scary. scary. I <laughs> applaud you. For <laughs> saying what so many kids have yet had the balls to say. No, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, you really like motivated me to start playing guitar. Well, why is he your, Why is he your idol, Brian? What is it about Tom that makes him your idol? Besides, like know. the normal, like so David, David, thing. Anthony, and Travis can just destroy whatever it is. You're <laughs> yeah, do they don't want, don't let them shoot it down. I think he's got like the best sense of humor out of everybody there. It's, he is no, right about that. True. <laughs> but no, though. but he speaks like the truth. What, <laughs> or shoot that one down, <laughs> no, that's dude. True. You are always laughing at yourself and. Because I have a sense great of sense of humor. That's right. That's <laughs> it's point. funny, isn't it? Well, what about when you guys play as Boxcar Racer? What is your stage presence like? Uh, it's hard to say um, dick jokes when you're on stage singing about the end of the world. Right. I've already figured that one out. So I think the less talking, the better. But I don't know yet. We I haven't mean, really you, gone there yet. You want to be yourself on stage, and if you're I'm trying to be somebody else. Yes. Um, I looked in the mirror the other day, and I was right. like, you know what? I can't be that guy anymore. Um, I want to be. I want to be David. <laughs> I want to eat the best PB and J I've ever. Had. I almost cut the crust off for him. Right. I was oh. going to do that. Yeah. I was like that would have been a good. But he didn't time. like that. He's getting so pissed right now. He's he's looking back. No, he's looking for his PB and J because he knew I left it on the window. No, it's time. <laughs> it's time for a protein shake. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Did you hear the alarm go off? Every two hours. What about the plans for a boxcar racer? You guys are going to be touring smaller. Uh, yeah, like we're clubs, doing we're doing smaller clubs, yeah. Yeah, smaller venues. Yeah, we are. We're are you going... guys excited about doing that? I am. Doing smaller it's shows. Be fun. Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean. Yeah, it's just going to be a, it's, it's fun. I mean, the whole reason for this, is, you know, when we have some time uh, to ourselves, just do something a little bit different and just a new experience that we haven't had in a while. So it'll be a lot of fun. Do you guys get the big fat dope bus because you're coming from a big band? And are these guys reaping the rewards I'm of the big bus? I'm going on a moped. <laughs> <laughs> and I they get the bus and Anthony and I travel in a van. Oh, come on. Yeah. No, no. Uh, for real. We have bikes. Yeah. Like, we have these awesome Mountain Dew 10 speed outfits. Right. And uh, we Mountain just, Dew? Mountain Dew paid for them, yes. Yeah, Mountain Dew <laughs> sponsored us. I'm and so proud of you. Come on. <laughs> You've arrived, Tom. Huh? It's good. <laughs> We've made it. Yes. We uh, And we bike across America. And uh, the name of the tour is. Uh, Biking, <laughs> biking across America. Oddly enough, is what it's called. <laughs> all right. On that note, Oliver, you're 13. You have a question for these guys or for some of them? Oh yeah. Hey, uh, Tom and Travis. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so awesome talking to you. I'm a huge fan of Blink and Boxcar Racer. Well, thank you. Oh my. God. Hey, do you like my same humor to you? <laughs> no, you don't have to go off on that. What's your question? The, the other guy, mo you know, motivated. He, you motivated him to play guitar. In fact, you motiv motivated me to play bass. Because my dream is to jam with you someday. So I, I, I like I got a bass guitar around July 4th, and I can play about like 20 Blink songs now. And yeah. Hey, um, but what he's not saying is that he was he was <laughs> trained in jazz and classical <laughs> bass rhythms for like his whole life. And so when he finally oh. got this new guitar, he was able to therefore adapt to adapt to some of the harder Blink songs <laughs> to play. Because they're so scientifically written. How, how old is he? 
13. 13, he's <laughs> played all of her songs. Hey. <laughs> no, he's been and playing he for him. he's been playing for 13 years. You guys got it. He's, he's, he's a prodigy. Yes. Okay, well, anyway, my question is... Uh, <laughs> well, anyway. How does, uh, how does Mark feel about you and Travis having, like, other bands? Good question. Oh, I think he's totally fine with it. Actually, what we do in our spare time is just kind of what we all do in our spare time. That's why... He's trying to raise a baby right now, right? Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations about your baby, dude. Oh, thank you. I know I have one, too. I'm trying thought, to raise one saw, as well, but... I saw pictures of her on Blink-22.com. She's cool. Hey, you're 13. Is he dude. hitting on her already? Yeah, like she's like six weeks old, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you know, hey, uh, hey, but no, but what we we all try and just do different things in our spare time, and even in the little more spare time besides boxcar racer, Travis is out doing the transplants and you know trying to put together a uh, record label and stuff like that, and um, so we all have different hobbies and and different things to do, so uh, everyone's really supportive of each other. It's awesome. That's really cool. Now is that the truth? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just seems. People always think weird things yeah, too. Like, it, that. It seems, well, like I get, but this, this boxcar racer thing was never meant, honestly, to be a a big production. It was just a full spur of the moment thing. Let's hey, let's just we had our first break and said so let's try and do something. The really only different. reason why it seems weird from an outsider looking in, and I, and I, I know the answer to this, but you wanted to find the best drummer around. The best drummer was in Blink One Eighty Two. That's the, that is the, honestly like, and I knew the I knew. Without a doubt that there was hardly any time to do this record, and I right. knew if I called Travis, it would be done in a matter of days, you know, for the drum perspective. I mean, you could spend months on drums of if the course. guy, and, uh, and I just, that's why. And, and Travis digs the music, too, so it just kind of worked out. But, you know, we haven't really been doing anything, and it's started to grow on its own, so we're just like, okay, well, actually, let's get this band together, and let's do some stuff in our spare time. So. Cool. All right, well, we have to take a quick break here on Love Line. We've got Boxcar Racer, Travis and Tom and David and Anthony are here. If you want to talk to them, 1-800-LOVE-191. If your penis is falling off, it's the exact same phone number. I'm Stryker uh, for Adam Kroll and Dr. Drew. More Love Line after this. Love 1-800-LOVE-191. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom, the most trusted for over 80 years. Hi, this is Mark from Blink-182, and you are listening to Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew on Loveline. I have a really big dick. <laughs> We're back. That's right. Loveline is here. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Did you guys really play that on the radio right now? Yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. could say dick on the radio. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, just, just late night or like... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't really dick know. means Richard, right? Yes. Uh, also it's not, by one, it's not one of the seven <laughs> words you can't say. <laughs> It's not, and it's uh, how you say it too. I believe if the, it, it's in context, it has. There's no other way to describe that anatomy. And it's important that we bring the anatomy up. Exactly. And, and you, you being the doctor on the show, that's why we can that's, say it. Yeah, I give you All that right. license. Boxcar Jay's Racer definitely. is here, and before we get into some more calls, we're going to hear a song from their CD, which came Uh-oh. out, uh, I think, in May, right? Yeah. And they're doing a tour. We're going to give some of those dates after this. Here's "I Feel So," Boxcar Racer on Love Line.
Boxcar Racer, I feel so. If you listen to any alternative rock station, you've heard that song a million times, but the entire CD came out uh, in May. And you guys, Boxcar Racer, are going to start off uh, a tour in Tucson, which is my old stomping ground. So uh, thanks for going to a smaller city to do that. Then you're going to be in uh, Austin, going to be in New York, Chicago, Salt Lake. Then uh, back in L.A., November 23rd and November 24th at the Wiltern in Los Angeles and a bunch of dates in between. Yeah, I think actually San Bern- Bernardino is now going to be our first show on the 22nd of October. Oh, it is? Yeah. Where I are you going to play in San Bernardino? Well, Bernardino. Well, <laughs> hey, we're going to actually try to change that. I was talking to Anthony. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like it's at this place where you go and maybe one of your friends could get shot or stabbed on the way on the way into the club. So we're not really into playing there anymore. Yeah. Maybe, maybe no, we'll switch uh, to the glass it's house. It's not a very good... Uh, yeah, the glass house the, is a good place. The glass yeah. house is fun. We should do that then. I don't want to... Yeah, that's Glass like my, my our old neighborhood too, like San Bernardino, Fontana. But it's just a bad place. Yeah, I don't want to. This is just me. And Tom won't come if it's a bad place. <laughs> no, it's not. It's <laughs> just I don't want to get stabbed or shot. <laughs> no, just just you. Now, just speaking for yourself. This is just me speaking for yeah, myself. Anybody else wants to get stabbed or shot, you're okay. You know, with that? you're entitled to your own desires. Right. What have you? Of course. That's nice. All right. Let's let's take some calls here. Uh, Bill, you're 22. Hello. Who's this? Hi, Bill. Speak. <laughs> okay, Bill's. Wait, Bill's wait, wait. There. We need. We need. <laughs> we're, our, we're, having a, we're having a problem with our computer. This our screen whole screen is, is off. I'm just guessing names. They've here. got to bring in Sarah. Here you're here 70. Go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> All Hello? right. Line two. <laughs> yes. Who's line two? Carolina. Carolina. 16. Hello. Hi, hey. you're 16 on Love Line. Hi. <sighs> you all right? What's up? <laughs> Sorry, I've been crying. What's going on? My boyfriend just broke up with me three days ago. How long were you with him? It would have been nine months today. Nine months. And, um... I hate... 16. I hate crushes, you know? Like, when you hear your heart... There's nothing worse than getting your heart broken. Better now than later. That's true. And you're only 16. Yeah. But you know what, though? That doesn't help. Oh, you're only 16. That totally helps, because it makes you wiser, experienced. Well, you know what? Anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger, that's for sure. You stole that from Daniel today, huh? No. Okay, I'm just wondering. <laughs> no, I no, no. That I heard that from like Field of Dreams or something like that. <laughs> I have like these big giant cutouts of uh, Kevin Costner, and sometimes it helps me through tough times. <laughs> and so, you know what though? You know, what? I think the doc should speak on this one as well. No, 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 no. Okay, no. This is what I'm thinking. Go ahead. Because I write songs about this. You know what? You think that you'll never, ever, ever love again. You really do think that, but the reality is you will. And each day that that you wake up, it's going to hurt a little bit less and a little bit less, and this one day it won't six? hurt anymore. Yeah, it was no. the day I just woke up and it felt the worst. I know, and you might have a couple bad days here and there, but it will get better, and there is somebody else out there that will be like more stoked on you than this guy ever was i was nicer than this guy ever was and uh has i don't know I mean, my, my sense of humor there's so many <laughs> so other many dudes things. out there no that, but there yeah. is there's why did you break up carolina yeah why yeah because <laughs> i slapped him because you socked him i slapped, slapped him, him. Why, why did you slap yeah why did you slap because him? he was trying to overpower me uh, physically like holding you down or something no he pushed me why did he push you because he said I was getting in his face, and I was not getting in his face. Well, you right. be well you're better like off that. then. So yeah. this is a the way of Corona. Do you come from a family? Well, not enough. <laughs> you come from a family where people pushed and hit each other. My grandfather used to spank. Yeah. All right. So it's not okay to do that. And it, when you're in a relationship where that starts to happen, that is just the beginning. This well, is a relationship that not only needed to end, it must end. It well, is abusive. So it's inappropriate. It's violent. And you should count your blessings. I understand it hurts, and I understand you love this guy, but this was going. This is not a good relationship, and you will see that someday. Yeah. Yeah. You just tell him to kick rocks. Anyone who puts hands on you and you're a girl—that's that, that, horrible. That is not a horrible. path. Once guys have pa- crossed that path, listen to me, Carolina. It gets. It keeps going. It gets worse. Okay. 
<laughs> so we, we'd be a despicable asshole. Yeah. He's a despicable yeah. asshole. He's a dick. And he wouldn't have done it too. Like he wouldn't have done that if he wouldn't have done other things too later on. You know? Yes. That's like he wouldn't just like shove you and stuff. I mean, he would actually hit you some sometimes. Oh, no, it's gonna always. snowball into always. Into some always. Strangle me though. He tried to strangle you. Now, why would you even want to be with a nut like that? Because it felt because good. I had sex with him. Oh well, that I makes sense got then. Yeah, so, uh, listen, Carolina, n- that does not make any goddamn sense. <laughs> and I wow, understand. he said the GD oh, right now. Oh, damn. Because, <laughs> thank you. Wow. You're impressed with the words we can use yeah. in the show, aren't you? <laughs> You've done this show 400 I times. What's, what's the matter with you? Uh, but listen, just count your blessings. You, you grieve the loss. It's, these are normal feelings, good feelings. They're uh, awful feelings, painful feelings. But you will get through this. And next time, do not... Have sex with a despicable. But did you? Asshole. She said. Did you say you got pregnant? Almost. I almost got. Almost pregnant. got pregnant. I oh, called right. him a despicable right. asshole. Yeah. Oh, I also have that question. You could say that word too. Hey, you're gonna have sex a lot more, like well, in your life, and you're not even gonna care about this one. And he won't like hold this. you down, hit you, or yeah. tumble you, uh, or. Tru- but like be that. careful with you and your instincts, because you were abused by your granddad. <laughs> Physically, and you're going to be kind of attracted to guys like that, so be cautious, all right? Drew, so if some guy just starts out as a slapper, which isn't good, more than likely, he's going to go worse well, than once that. Once guys cross that threshold, they keep going. Okay. So, Carolina, take that advice right there. Uh, computer not working, so we go confusion. Amelia? Yeah. What's up? You're 14. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what is society's problem with a 14-year-old and an 18-year-old being together. The society does not have a problem. Why? Oh. The, 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 those, the laws are there to protect the 14-year-old. Because when you're 18 and you come to know, you, when you look at your peers and think, what kind of a-hole, a-hole would be with a 14-year-old? Yeah, that's gnarly. There's no 18-year-old that is considered cool that's dating a 14-year-old. No. The, or, none. Or normal. Or normal. It's, creepy. That's, it's weird. That's You'll right. never know an 18-year-old. At, at 14, you won't know that. But at 18? When you hit 18 and you look at someone else that's 18. She's 14. Oh. Is she not the 18-year-old? Erica, you're the 14-year-old. Okay, well, the thing is... Are you... You're 14, right? Mm-hmm. Going yeah. on 30, right. The thing is... Okay. The thing is... My parents are getting a divorce, and at first, whenever we started going out or whatever, they both liked them, and then after they split up, we, me and my mom moved out, because my dad was basically a dick while we were growing up and everything. And There's that word again, Travis. You're right. Yeah. Where's my bird? Anyway, and after we moved out, my dad all of a sudden had a problem with him because I don't know what it is. It's just he's he wants to be. To get, he wants he, to be dad now, huh? Now that he's gone, he's probably trying to get a tighter hold on the deal. Yeah, but after we moved out, he's trying to use the fact that my mom still trusts my boyfriend no, no no against her so he can get custody of me and my sisters and her not get any visitation rights mm, it's pretty gnarly but the thing is we found a bunch of stuff against him that mm. he doesn't stand a chance well look the courts it will probably ask you who you like to stay with that's right. one of the things that yeah happen. so but look th- this is a bad situation and naturally enough you're seeking refuge with what you seem what you believe to be a more secure and a more uh mature male, but in fact, when you're 18, you'll realize that there would be nothing more immature than an 18-year-old who would swoop in and And take over. An 18-year-old guy, not only is he an a-hole, but he's not going to be going out with you to take you for a soda and a hot dog. No. I mean, he's... he's, Nor nor to help you. He wants to make out, and that's all he wants from me, and he knows you're easy prey. Yeah, that's weird, no matter how you look at it. And think about how much you've changed since you're like 10 to 14. That's how much you're going to change when you hit 18, and then 21 and 22. Well put. God. Well put. Would 21 she, ask her if out, she would man. date a ten-year-old. Because you change that much, and then oh, when I you get out of high school. I know you yeah. would, but I'm talking about you, Striker. <laughs> Amelia, you would date a ten-year-old, right? No. Exactly. All right, Damn. it's the same idea. Right. Uh, let's go to uh, <laughs> Kayla. Hey. Hey, what's up? You're 15. Yeah. Hey. Um, I had a question for Tom. Yes. <laughs> hey, Tom. I'm from San Diego too. Okay. So, um, yeah, just wanted to tell you. Six one nine. Uh, 909. Not anymore. Nine uh, 760. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm up from the 858. When's the last time you lived in 619? <laughs> a long time ago. Um, when that was the only area code in San Diego. When that Diego. was the only one. That's true. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and Oceanside. Well, thanks and for your San call. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Thank you for your call on the area codes. Um, Tom, okay. Um, congratulations on your daughter. Well, thank you very much. No problem. And I just want to know um, how your relationship with your wife has been so far. I mean... Sexually and you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. 
<laughs> well, every once in a while, I like small pieces of furniture in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's only if I'm hot. No, I'm just joking. No, oh, why? It's good, I guess. It's I good. mean, we have a daughter, don't we? We had to make that. Yeah. And that oh. takes, that's the best part about a kid is like all the practice. Because a guy's dream is like the quickie. And uh-huh. you get a bunch of those when you're trying to make a kid. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Okay, sure. Oh, wait. Maybe you don't. Well, I was kind of do looking know, at the dudes Do you know if here. the baby was conceived on the road, at home, on a hammock? It was conceived at home. Okay. During a planning stage of the conceiving stage. This is when they were it. measuring the temperature and they, right. they were yeah. plotting it on the calendar. Yeah. And her yeah. going, you got to be home from the tour on this day. Yeah. It was nice. like that. Yes? Um, do you remember Brie Cheese when you guys were on the road home on MTV? No. Brie Cheese, you called her and you told her that her name was the type of cheese. That was like Brie? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. May- oh, yeah, yeah. We got her letter from our taco place, yeah. Sombrero. Yeah, yeah she's we, my friend. She we're a big fan of, uh, this taco. tacos, of tacos. You, you get know? Mexican food from Sombrero. Sombrero, yeah. Just we because. put in some songs and stuff like that. And, uh, Where are Sombreros? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's in San Diego. San Diego. And so now we get like fan mail and stuff there. So one day we went in there, and I was getting a famous burrito that I always get there. We actually gave them a gold record, but some kid ran in and stole it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we get fan mail there, and I got one, and I, and I called this girl and um, said hi. Her name was Brie, and I thought it was similar to Brie Cheese. But, right. you know, that's more for classy intellectuals like myself. They eat soft cheese. And Very crackers. highbrow humor here. All right, yeah. we're going to talk about Ritz and, uh, and more cheese and, <laughs> and, uh, and boxcar racers here. we got all the guys in from the band in the studio here. That's Drew, I'm Stryker, and more Loveline coming up after this. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Hey, we're back on Loveline. I'm Stryker in for Adam Kroll along with Dr. Drew. Boxcar Racer is here. And uh, 40s of Mickey's are being uh, passed around rapidly. No, no, no. What is that? No, that's apple juice. I'm sorry. This is a 40 of apple juice. Treetop. 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 0.1% um, juice. Uh, in, in San Diego, when you lived in the 619, do you know a girl named Lee Hefner? Lee Hefner. Possible make out in the early 80s? Oh, it's, uh, no. It, yeah, I did make out with him. It's Hugh Hefner's brother. No, it's a girl. It's a girl. It's a girl. Lou Lee, Hefner? Lee, Lee. L e i g h. No, I don't. But yeah, for enough money, I'll kiss my own father on the tongue. What about for free? <laughs> I'll do it for free too. <laughs> there you go. For enough money or for free, I'll kiss my own father All on right. the tongue. One eight hundred love one nine one is the phone number. Uh, if you want to speak to these guys or ask uh, any questions that are on your mind, let's go to uh, Jasmine. You're fifteen. Yeah. What's going on? Um. Well, me and my dad are always arguing about everything, and like I don't know why, but we are. And he says I'm just, like, trying to disrespect him and everything, and I'm not. It's just we always are fighting. Well, you're 15, for one, so. How old's your dad? 17. 40, no, he's, um, 44. It doesn't really matter, but my point being that I guess you're kind of. I get that. You know, it's my normal. birthday tonight, tomorrow. No, it's not. Yeah, tonight, yeah. right now. Is Why it, are you, what, <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm turning 44. I was. I'm turning 44 in an hour. Happy birthday, you're not. <laughs> we <laughs> we were both thinking the same thing. I yeah, someone deserves spankings, and it's gonna be thank you. Know, you in the butt. It's all happy all birthday, Doctor Drew. Tomorrow. Yeah, happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. That's awesome. How are we gonna celebrate in here tomorrow? I don't know, but I don't think we are. Well, we'll bring a cake okay. or something. Hey, Bye. but I have a, I have something to to say about this issue though. About the parents and the. I and the plan kids. on myself being the new father that I am. Um, I plan on taking dad parenting classes. Good. It's one of the coolest things that I learned that I never had as a kid was that when your parents respect you as a child and listen to you and and kind of just back you on the things that you, you know, like even if it's wrong, they just listen to you and hear your side of it and go, hey, you know, I understand, but this is the way it should be because of my experience. That would be cool. It makes you a better parent. And like I know some families have done that and they're like crazy close to their kids. It actually, just doing that makes your brain, the child's brain grow. Yeah. All you have to do is be present with your child and connect in a real way over whatever it is that's on their mind. And Jasmine, your dad grow. your dad's not really listening to you, I take it. Excuse me? Your dad your dad doesn't listen to you. Well, I mean it's not that he doesn't listen to me, it's just we don't like agree on anything. Oh yeah, and um Tom, we have a big birthday. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, so you're Sagittarius. Okay, then there's nothing wrong with her. It's all the dad. Of yeah. course. Because yeah. she's Sagittarius. Yeah, it's your birthday. So. But in either way, I think there's a give and take for both of you guys. You've got to be understanding that he will never, not never, but it's hard for him to understand your position. And he's got to like be like, okay, listen, I can't, you know, 
I can't know everything all the time, like probably most dads think they do. But I feel like, like... Go ahead. I was just going to say it's the reality of the age also. I mean, for me, four, uh, 15 to 18, I, 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 as much as I loved my parents, I just we couldn't quite click. Like, me and my dad were always... wasn't coming home on time, just stupid little things, but it just always at ends. I feel like when, when, when I have kids, I'm going to be somewhat of a, a cool father understanding them. I don't know. I mean, and you yeah. said, Tom, that you feel the same. I mean, is it the generation, like, guys? Well, our it's age a better, it's kind of them? a cooler generation now, I think. Yeah. I think just because the information age, people are exposed to so much more, and we're a little bit more liberal with our way of thinking. And Well, you know, we're in California, too. We're much more accepting of, of individualism. I mean, that's the topic of tonight. I've individualism? Up, yes. Well, it's how you write the songs, right? Yes, exactly. But and I don't know. But, but you now, you, you, listen, yeah, I've had to do a radio show for several years with a guy that was raised by liberal hippie parents, and he is the most bitter, <laughs> he hates uh, annoying person. Yeah. You can't. You have to be present, and kids need lots of structure. They, need they do, lot, huh? Lots of it. That, that, it's like raising a puppy. You know, I'm scared to death. I got this little girl, yeah. and she's going to just walk all over me. I don't know what to do. Just read all the parenting You books. have, like... I have 20 triplets. girls. I have triplets. Two boys and a girl. Triplets. Oh, God. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. No. Now. I have one right now. Yeah. How? No wonder you're doing a nighttime show. You get out of the house at night. Look, my hair was David's color when, when, <laughs> I, when they were born. <laughs> Jesus. Seriously. I'm dead serious. That's why you get all the TV work now. Your How old are they now? Gentlemen. <laughs> How old are they now? <laughs> Ten. Silver yeah, Fox. you got a few more years, and then <laughs> the you're just we're gonna. I'm, I'm just aft after that. Oh my god! You and know what's nice about this show? There's three different conversations going on right now. Yeah, but you know what's what's good? They're all crazy rad They're over there. It's like you. I hear Skippy Chunky is <laughs> the best peanut butter I've ever had. <laughs> and someone just called you the Silver Fox, Drew. Alisa. Oh yeah. Hi. Alisa, hi. You're 29. You have scary dreams. Oh yeah, like almost every night, and yeah. I just want to know if can can I have a that can cause heart problem? No, but wh what's your ac accent? Huh? What is your accent from? Where is it from? Martian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. That's silly. No, don't ask me that question. You're not from the valley, are you? I, I, listen, I need to no. ask. The, I need to know where you're from, and then we're going to ask. Oh, some more okay. Questions. I'm from California. <laughs> <laughs> Originally. <laughs> Originally. No. Who are you? Oh. Well, we need to look. What's your we ethnic need, background? We need to figure out why you're having these Asian. nightmares. Asian. Right. Okay. And were you? Are you? Were you? A, you came over with your family? Huh? Did you come over with your family, or were you adopted <laughs> over, or what happened? Um. Mm, no. How did you get here? <laughs> it's a job. I need to know. You came here on a job. Uh huh. You are. She's 29. a dancer. You have a sugar daddy. <laughs> Where, what was your family of origin like? I need to know what you're wearing to understand <laughs> what's going on. Brother. What was your family of origin like? Huh? What was your family of origin like? What was, what was your upbringing like? You're doing something illegal, Lisa, aren't you? Huh? What are you doing? Huh? I'm a nurse. A what? I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. What, what, a what was your family of origin like? <laughs> what? What was your family of origin like? <laughs> what kind of circumstances were you raised in? What? The regular family. What, what I'm getting at is that one one of the more common reasons somebody your age would get recurrent nightmares is a post traumatic stress reaction. Oh. Mm, and if um, you had if you had experiences of powerlessness in childhood, that can sort of set you up for that. Years later, it can. Oh yeah. Really? No, how no, how no, come? No, no. Maybe because like um, I worried too much. You what too much? You worry. worry too much? That's all part of the piece. I, I just get post traumatic. But stress how come me. infants have nightmares? That's weird. Have you noticed that? Being they wake up, yeah. Oh, but you know what my theory is? Because mm. they can only see like 10 inches from their face, and all day they have these humans with like eight <laughs> times bigger heads coming in, and they're going, whoa, go, 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 go. <laughs> that would scare the shit out of me, too. Oh, watch oh no. Oh, yeah. We can say all these other. We can talk about <laughs> dicks and assholes, but. <laughs> all right. Caca. Don't say caca. <laughs> no, but infants, like the other night, I was just, I finally put my daughter to sleep. Then just out of nowhere, ah, screaming bloody murder, and I don't even know. Like it's like, and I that may not be. Th th these are neuro how old is she now? Six weeks. Well, these are just neurological discharges. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no yeah. self. There's no other. There's no image. It, things are just starting to take form. These are just like having seizures almost. Really? They're, they're just discharges, drive discharges. It, it, to think about it, in terms of our adult minds, you can't. It's a different thing altogether. That's weird, man. Yeah. Nightmares are scary. Yeah. At least you do sound like Ooh, a goofball. By the way, yeah, you're not gonna tell it. Give us no. Anything, I know. So. I just want to know what. Give me, uh, give me one thing about what your dreams about. Like I'm in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> like with the guy from the Brady Bunch when he calls the statue Oliver. 
All right. Like, and wow. then there's a devil. <laughs> I'm like, a super. All right, Alyssa, listen, listen. <laughs> you, you need, you, if you want to do something about this, do. You're an RN. You know this help for this kind of thing. Go ahead. It's, it's okay to get help, right? Drew. Yeah. Tell me about your family circumstances. Uh, they're in the break. We gotta okay. Go. All right. Right. When we get back, I'll talk about it. All right. Know. Well, you're supposed to say what and imitate her. Thanks what? for being my teammate what? on this. <laughs> All right. Boxcar Racers here. I'm striking for Adam. That's Drew. More Love Line is coming up after the Asbiatch. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Love Line. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. We're back here on Loveline. Hope you had a fun, long-ass Labor Day weekend at Stryker and Dr. Drew. I'm in for Adam Carolla on Loveline, as I said. Tom, Travis, David, and Anthony are here from Boxcar Racer. And this is by no means a side project to the Blink guys. This is the real deal, like full-fledged, 100% effort all out. We do everything with 100% effort. This is a band. It's a band. Well, you know how people say it's, it's their side project. Well, I, I mean, I mean I I'm just. I know. And in, 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 Mark in Jealous? Fair, in fairness to Blink 182, I mean, Blink 182 is our priority, you know, but um, but we still put our hearts and effort into this, you know? We want everything. We don't want to put out a bad product ever. No, of course We're not. artists, you know? <laughs> I'm going to cut off my ear right. in the making of this product, you know. <laughs> that is Tom uh, Van Gogh. Uh, DeLong over there. Yes. And uh, it's 1-800-LOVE-191. Travis, Jesse19 wants to speak to you. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for Travis. What's happening? Hey, um, I live in Corona, and I just wanted to ask you, uh, how, how did you come up with the, um, your clothesline ideas? Uh, you know what? It was just me and a couple friends, like, whatever, getting into trouble and uh, being creative at the same time and uh, just made some stupid t-shirts and then uh, it was more of like just like a little posse and then it turned into uh, a clothing company for whatever reason people liked it and and I wanted to buy it so whatever we just made it happen it's still uh, ran by me and my friends we don't really know what we're doing and we don't care we're having a good time doing it what, what about the whole record label uh, Travis yeah um, yeah I have a record label. I'm starting a record label and I'm signing my favorite bands. I'm gonna, uh, I'm basically gonna be like a mini, acting like a major. Like I'm gonna sign a hip hop band, a speed metal band, a punk right. rock band, uh, a Spock rock band. You know, <laughs> whatever, whatever I feel like doing. So it's awesome. It's cool. What's the name of it? It's called the Sal Records. Nice. Spock rock's a rad. Spock rock. Way to yeah. describe so many bands out there, like where they're like. Spock rock. They look like they're from space, I guess. Yeah, I like it. Adrian. Yeah. What's up? You're 15. Yeah. Hey, what's up? How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, I guess, but, um, yeah. Anyway, um, this is, like, basically for, it's an opinion, you know, for, for all you guys, okay. Um, okay, well, I met this guy over summer, right? Okay, and I start school tomorrow, and then we started dating, whatever, and then, um, he asked me out to be his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And he's my first boyfriend, like, seriously, like, my first boyfriend. And, um... But we go to different schools. But we live in the same town. We both live in Fontana. Yeah, hey, what I grew up? up there. He, I grew up there. He goes to Full High. <laughs> I like Fontana. What's up with the IE riders? I like Fontana. Yeah, exactly. I'd be going to Fontana. You Hall like Fontana? I like Fontana. Jim Rome. If, if I didn't, Jim Rome yeah. calls him Fontucky. I thought that was the raddest way to. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a. If I didn't grow up there, I would probably be a spoiled like. Oh, unappreciative. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Not, not saying you are, but it taught gonna me. Sell yeah, if you've been it, to it made San Diego. It made me tougher, and I, I, I look back on it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I love Fontana, dude. I yeah, like. There you go. I love it. Wow. Where to back it? Well, yeah, I like anyway, Poway. Yeah. You know, it's got a great school district. Uh, they open up a like, Walmart. Jog that gated and, like, community is rough out there. Yeah. It's yeah. hard. Yeah, dude, it's like, it's so cool. I love it. But Garden Road. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but yeah. But see, the sucky thing is, I don't go to Full High. You know, mm. I go to a new school they built here. It's called Kaiser High School. Yeah. It's yeah. big, huh? Yeah, it's huge. I love it. It's like really cool. But anyway. <laughs> it's the, it's the high school without the bars surrounding it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you go to Miguel's? 
Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got sex yeah. there one time. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name, Tom? Miguel. Miguel. So oh, okay. what's the um, owner operator? What's the question? Okay, yeah. Okay, so okay, now that he, we're going to separate schools and so we can't really see each other like anymore cuz like we can't spend time with each other. Um I was wondering like what do you think like like cool things we should just do to like be able to see each other like during the school year? How is far he, apart do you live? Is he 16? Huh? I, is he 16 yet? Yeah, uh, yeah. So does he have a car? Does he have a license? No, no, no. Yeah, he has he has his permit. Fontana days. Go the to best, Fontana days. The okay. best thing, uh, do you see each other? Or the best thing to be in contact now is like internet, I guess. It's like free for the yeah, most part. See, he, he's not into the whole internet thing. Uh, he's Whoa. in Fontana. He doesn't have a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, he doesn't have a computer. <laughs> Walk over to his trailer and just hang out with him. I'm all, I'm you know all, best thing like satellite phones because you have great coverage and, uh, you know, for $3,000 you can get a great phone. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, see. Yeah, I'm just like I'm just wondering because hopefully we can stay a couple. See, but bad thing is he already got on the bad side of my family. Like, oh, no, that's not good. Why would happen? So that's not good because he he has a habit of promising me stuff like, hey, dude, get ready, we're gonna go <laughs> go to this concert, we're gonna go see this, this band, this local band's real cool. I'll go pick you up. And then I get ready, and I'm waiting, and he never comes. <laughs> That's a problem. Adrian, uh, that, that he is, sounds like a great guy. He sounds like a, he, this is another despicable prick. This is another one of these <laughs> asshole guys that we have my to. Mom, what you my guys mom are. And my dad are like already. They they despise him already. Yeah, my you should give up on this guy. This is not good. This well, is not may, a boyfriend. Maybe he's just trying to get his stuff together. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I do stuff like that once in a while, and whatever. Yeah, uh -huh. he's super cool though. <laughs> no, you, know? you, you don't do like that's not. No, there's though. times like whatever. Like if I'm, you really like a chick and you respect her or whatever, you're like don't even call. And maybe, yeah, maybe but he's he what sixteen. So, maybe he likes her so much he's like playing games. Yeah, he's sixteen. I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna bring something up too. Is that he went to Arizona like two times this summer, and like he he never called me once. <laughs> okay, I changed my mind. Never mind. So why do you think he's your boyfriend then? If he's going to Arizona, not calling, saying he's gonna come pick you up, and doesn't even. And show why are you up? laughing about this? Well, it's maybe normal. he went to Sedona, Arizona, and saw some UFOs and had a spiritual enlightenment. Yeah, but see, like, I don't know. He, he told me he went for a good reason, which is... Yeah, you know, Sedona. I mean, some UFOs. people... UFOs. Well, you can you can go out there and sit with the Indians and uh, <laughs> look at the stars. And, I guess so. Whatever it was, he, he must have liked it. Has he already he, cheated on you? He hasn't cheated on me yet. Mm. We haven't cheated on each other yet. Because mm. we're really, like, I told him straight out. I said, dude, I'm not... Uh, okay, I don't... I'm not... I don't... Feel good. Okay, how would how how would you feel, dude? If like Jesus. if you're with somebody and you and you didn't know that they're cheating on you, you know we have like this like respect for each other. You know we're yeah. Okay, he's already obviously showing you tremendous out. respect, setting you yeah, up on exactly. dates and not showing up. Other, it's like a waste of time if you're gonna just cheat on me. So we tell each other straight out, like you know what, you know if I, if I was to cheat on it, I tell it straight out, I'd be like you know what, dude, I I cheated on you because. You know, I told him straight out, but I wouldn't do that. Cause Isn't that rad though? You know, in relationships you get into, you go, just tell me if you do it. You're out totally. Yeah. That's yeah. like this is how our relationship. Just tell me, dude. If like if you don't like if you're not feeling the relationship, just tell me. Nine yeah. dudes so far. Adrian. Yeah. Adrian, there's no way he's gonna tell you anything. Yeah. Just accept that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He wouldn't no call way. you. No way. He's not even know. telling you when he's in the five two zero in Arizona. Yeah. yeah, he's got to be honest and straight up with you, and then he's, and then you guys can have a healthy he's relationship. Totally straight up about no, it. No, no, he's, he's not. not. Adrian, no, he's, he's not. Not if he's disappearing to, to Arizona. Yeah. and you're starting a new school year, so there's gonna be more boys. There's gonna be lots of picking dudes everywhere. This is one of those guys I guarantee he's gonna end up on cops in yeah. about oh, five yeah. years, beating, his, beating his, around, uh, beating his neighbor's he's a bad mailbox guy. with a baseball I would love bat. to see that guy naked, <laughs> you know, and just really examine him and just say, hey, you know, what are you all about, Mister? Oh, that would be fantastic, Kyler. Yes. What's up? You're 14. Uh, I nice. just want to say, Tommy, you're my freaking idol, dude. That's dude. two idols so far. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this call, guys, but I think we should kind of go into some of the reasons. <laughs> 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 Anyways, um, Tom, I have Anyways. your guitar. I love it, dude. Thank you very much. You married Duncan and Bader, dude, all the way. It's a good sounding guitar. It is. It's sick. It um, it was funny. Fender, I uh, Fender. I play Fender guitars, and not because I know my scales that they want to make or replicate my guitars, because they thought I actually came up with a cool concept. But it actually is doing quite well over there. But uh, I think Fender the people pants. that guitar <laughs> pants, <laughs> it's, it's guitar pants. Yeah, yeah, it's like certain pants to wear to help you play guitar better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're just kind of baggier, and they give you support where you need it. But um, and doesn't Mark have his own bass? Yeah, he does actually as well. Yeah, it's a good bass guitar too. I don't know, but thank you very much for the compliment. Yeah. Anyways, um, I was wondering, what kind of amplifier do you do you use? Um, I use a mixture of stuff. I I use Mesa Boogies primarily, but I use Marshalls as well, and I I kind of mix them together because what they kind of seem to add to each other. What one has, the other doesn't. So it kind of works out nice that way. Uh huh. 
<laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, Flag. Okay. Let's talk. Okay, who's the idol? All right, Kyler. Is that? Is there any more? Uh, no. Thank you very much. Take it easy, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Do you call everyone, buddy? Uh, only if that's our name. What was his name, buddy? I don't know. Oh, Kyler. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Ted. Yeah. To the buddy what's or, up, du- man? or dude? Buddy. You're 16. Yeah. What's her? What's your question? Oh, I had a question about uh, my dad was abusing me and drinking and hitting and stuff. Great. I want to know if I should move in with my girlfriend. She's got her own place. You're 16. How old is she? 19. 19? How did you wow. land a 19-year-old? Wow. 16? I didn't even know what a girl was. Well, I knew, but... <laughs> that should mark out all the bad things in your life just there. Like you have a 19-year-old? Hey, how? I want to hear the doctor's answer on well, that Well, I was just one. thinking about how we just completely raked over the coals a young lady who was 14 dating an 18-year-old. Now it's a dude with a 16-year-old, 19-year-old. <laughs> it's cool. Like, awesome. oh, right on. <laughs> but but I'm sure she works at the supermarket, like has the best job and everything. Where is she living with her parents? No, nah, she's got her own place. She's in college. Oh, my God. Why don't you call social services about your dad's behavior? Huh? You ever thought about that? Probably just want to get in no, the mix with really. it. You know how it gets gnarly. Why would you want to inflame the situation? That's probably. Well, I know. I know. I know it's the right thing to do. It just seems like it would be hard. You know. The idea is not to inflame. Yeah, I understand. You're sort of trying to fly low and you know tr- not inflame the guy, but he's an out of control alcoholic. Where's my bourbon? You need to bring in some structure. <laughs> and you, when he gets out of control, you call the police. All right. You, you, there's got to be consequences for his behavior, and someone's yeah, got. That's not right. Someone's got to get him to the point where he's willing to get some treatment for his disease. Because if he sobers up, he won't behave like this. Would your dad freak if you moved in with this 19-year-old? I don't know if he'd even notice. Really? Wow. So, mm. Drew, I mean, does the shit, should he even you, bother You've you got to make decisions that are, g- that are good for you. Yeah, you should. You should yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, if he's not going to notice the kid even moving out. Do you have any counselors at school or anybody you can talk to about uh, what's available for you? I got some guidance counselor, but I don't really want to talk to them. They don't know. They don't do much. Well, maybe just sit down and talk, see if they have any ideas. You need to make some choices that are good for you. Are you going to be able to get out and go to college, that kind of thing? Yeah, my grades are pretty good. All right, you're how old now? 16. 16. You're going into 11th or, tw- or 10th? I'm a junior, 11th. So you got well, two, you got two, two more years. years. Can you can hang with the two years and get to a college or something? All right. The guy's like, if his dad's the hit. And die, what about like grandparents? It's gnarly. Like, I don't even know what to like, say, but my first thing would be like, get the hell out of there if you can. But it's, but it's hard. You're 16. He's not an emancipated man. Man, start a band. But the guy's play music. hitting him. What do you do I about that? I call the police every time. You should call. I got a question about that for Tom. What's that? I gotta know, I gotta decide on this name for a band. Yeah, I got two. Let me. Oh, All right. Yeah, tell me what you think. All right, twelve gauge Valentine. That's a good or name. Independent youth. No, twelve gauge Valentine. Twelve gauge, Val- yeah. 12 gauge Valentine's kind of emo, and independent youth is more of a hardcore kind of name. Like a, but early it sounds like elementary. But twelve gauge Valentine sounds cool. Uh, I think. I don't know. I'm going on a limb here. I think it sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, me and my friend are trying to decide. There's another one that you can use. What? Uh, my penis tastes great. <laughs> that's more of like a slogan. Uh, it's I it might not even really work. That's, I mean, just, that's just a statement of fact. That just could be just something you put on a T-shirt and wear yeah. around. But I don't know. But I think that's a good. I think that that one is good. But yeah, it's hard. You need, really need to deal with your living situation. Where, where's your mom? Uh, she's um, you know, just ignoring it. Oh, she's at home. Yeah. Oh, this is a mess. You gotta you gotta talk to your mom about this too. Is Why? your mom sane right. in at all? What? Is, does your mom have any sanity in her at all? I don't know. She's, she's like, a sane person outside the house, but... So your dad's got her wrapped around his finger. Yeah. Do you want to try to help your dad? I don't know. I just want to get out. Yeah, but you got two more years and you'll be out of there. I mean, just get your grades up. Stay out of the house as much as possible. You know, do sports and hang out with your friends. That's actually a good take. Like And, and avoid him like crazy. Hang out with the lady that you're into and, get to you know, be into music and, and sport, whatever it is, you know, and just concentrate on hanging out with your friends and get the hell away from him. Yeah, and, and if he if he acts up, you call 911. That's it. That's it. There has to be consequences. He's going to actions. He's gonna be bummed when he wakes up in jail one morning and goes, okay, now I know, you know. Your mom's got to step it up, too. What's she doing? Why is she just kicking it like that? I don't know. Man, well, at least you have 12-gauge Valentine, then. Yeah, that's a red band yeah, name. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, there's another band name. Vasectomy, Vasecta You. <laughs> <laughs> or Colostomy, Colostomy You. Any of those two would be good. <laughs> oh, hey, one more thing. Yeah. He's so oh, up and down. Atticus? I love this. Yeah. What's that, Ted? What's Atticus? It's just a, it's a clothing company that's uh, music-oriented. Um, punk rock bands and emo core, hardcore bands, that kind of thing. And... Rather than uh, being a, a kind of a clothing company that's based around board sports like skateboarding or surf, uh, surfing or whatever, it's it's based around music musicians and um, it's inspired by them. Is that it? 
That's it. Nice. I have a, <laughs> and uh, thank you. Wait, when um, <laughs> when uh, Take Off Your Pants and Jackie came out, was one of the names you were going to use the diarrhea of Anne Frank? Yes, that was an, or genital Ben and have, right. <laughs> <laughs> and have a big bear on the cover. Right. Yeah. Oh man, we have I some good ones. That. Yeah, those are so funny. Uh, let's see. There's a question here for you guys. Dino. What's up? What's up? You're 18. Hey, uh, Travis. Yeah. I wanted to ask you a question about your Cadillac, dude. All right. I have a 72 Chevy, and I want to fix it up, but I'm 18. I don't, I'm kind of broke. What would I do about going, like, fixing it slow, little Man, by little? I was <laughs> I was pretty slummy. Like, I, I had a... I had a if junkyards. You like it, if you like it, that's all that matters. Yeah, go to junkyards, find parts. Yeah. I have make, only, I've, only worked on a, I've only worked on a car one time in my life, Yeah. and I had to change a fan belt. And I took it apart, put the belt on, and put it back together. And I had all these extra pieces, and I'm like, "Where the hell did those things go?" Oh, no. So I started attaching things. I'm all, "Well, maybe the spring goes over here." My gas pedal was stuck, oh. and I couldn't slow down. Don't do that. Oh Are my you god! From yeah, any by, car by, clubs? What is that? Are you from any car clubs? You know, me and Anthony, the guy in, in uh, boxcar with me, we had a, we had a car club called the Ruins, but um, it's still existing. And we yeah. just gotta, we we all gotta step it up, and you know who we're talking about. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just go. Go get one of your friends club. to like heat your springs and do your those car will be way too low to the ground and get some white walls and uh Mercedes. Do it yourself. You'll learn that way. Yeah, put hey, your seat back. Travis. Yeah. Your girlfriend looks way, way better than the last one. <laughs> what what'd you say? <laughs> your new girlfriend looks way better than the last one. How do you know who my new girlfriend is? I saw her on um VMAs. Oh yeah. Well thank you. I, I like her way better too. Yeah. Yeah. Alright then. Thanks. All right, that's good. And on Jenny Jones tomorrow, Travis will be on there <laughs> hanging out. It'll be really, really, really good. All right, uh, boxcar racers here, and uh, we're talking uh, Chelsea. Hey. What's up? You're 17. Ooh. Hey. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're all okay. We're listening now. <laughs> What's up? Um, yeah. When I was 12. Um, uh oh, this is gonna be bad, probably. Yeah, yeah, it is. Go yeah, ahead. it's sad. I'm sorry. No, that's right. Um, my grandpa molested me for mm -hmm. like five months, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone knew about it in my family, my uh, my parents, my brother, my grandma, and. Uh, How did they all find out about it? I told them. You told everybody. Everyone. And then a after it'd been happening for a while. Mm, yeah. Okay. And what did they do? Nothing. Oh my oh, god. Man. Just send the Samoan Mafia after him. Yeah, that's and, horrible. And, like, my grandparents, like, even went to marriage counseling, like, with my the pastor at their church. Mm -hmm. And, like, I guess by law he's supposed to, like, tell them, them but he they he didn't, like, so nothing at all has happened. That is... How do you feel? Do you, I mean, obviously you want this guy to be or put away. You? I mean, do you? I mean... Well, How do you? What do you want to happen to him, if possible? What, what did you expect to happen when you told everybody, and what did you want them to I do? I thought that somebody would like care about it. Like my parents would try to comfort me, or like. What did they? What your parents say? They were like, "Oh, well, it's probably your fault." And no, oh, they, did, they did not say that. They did not say that. Because like, I would go over there and like just sleep, like on the couch and stuff, and like pretty much not wearing very much, and so. Who, whose father was this? My your, mom. Your mom. So he undoubtedly did this to your mom, too. And so when... No, he didn't. Oh, uh, I, I would be very surprised if he no, did. No, she told me about a lot of stuff, and, like, her uncle molested her and stuff. But all right, so the point is that I'm trying to make <laughs> is that your mom was abused, too, okay. sexually abused. Yeah, all right. And that for someone that has been through that kind of uh, horrible trauma, their levels of denial can be profound. Oh. And they tend to keep victimizers around them in their lives. So your dad kind of worries me a little bit, too, frankly. But be that as it may. If that uh, happened to my daughter, oh, I'm sorry. What? Jesus. <laughs> no, oh, but I would dick. be like, but you know what I'm saying. You'd, you'd, you'd kind of go, <laughs> I would start killing dick. people. You'd, yeah, you'd, you'd go, And if yeah, this dad's yeah. just kicking it, yeah. Oh, especially who's, whose dad is it? Is it his or your mom? No, it's mom's. The mom's yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, the mom had been sexually abused by What is your dad doing cool. through all this? What, what What's he Come saying on. to you? you know, yeah. Well, Why isn't he freaking? My Beat down. Dad is like sick. He has cancer and stuff. He uh, can't really do very much about it. Oh, your well, dad plus, is. Yeah. He may so be. A, some he may be there. some kind of an abuser too, because after like mom picked him, wow. yeah, mom was sexually abused. I stuff. love how like deep he can like thinking in it. You know, I never yeah, thought of something. Definitely uh, out there. Like he's been on heroin most of my life. There you go. Oh, okay, so now mom well, gets abused, so she finds an abuser. Yeah, so hey, they, I have I have a total idea. Why don't you just first thing in the morning. 
call the police and just go, this is what happened, and I want this taken care of, and I want this out of my life, and they'll direct you to some good people and get it. Yeah, the Department of Social Services, that's really the only way this is going to change. You can go to Al-Anon. You're dealing with addicts on, all over the place here, undoubtedly. <laughs> and you can get a sponsor and it's, get some support, and they can help you make these decisions and help guide won't. you. There's no way it can hurt you. I would think it would but be only good for you. Chelsea, you've got a right? lot of trauma to deal with here. You also have a genetic history that suggests you might, you know, you at least have a possibility of inheriting the addic- addiction, right? Right, yeah. Do you think you're an addict? Do you have that momentum with things? Yeah, I think, okay, yeah. Okay, so you have trauma, addictive genetics. That is usually what adds up to addiction, and you've got to be very, very careful with this. Well, my question really was, like, am I, like, supposed to be over this by now? No. It, how it, old How old were you when it happened? Twelve. Listen, this kind of trauma etches uh, a biology into your brain that you have to deal with for a long, long time. And to some extent, it leaves scars that never, never leave. You've had no treatment. You've had no opportunity right. to get through this. And you've had no... Not even an acknowledgement from your family that you've been through this horrible thing. And when you say treatment, that, I mean, that could be a number of different things, huh? Like just talking about it. And, right, and for a long time. For a long, for a long, long, long time. And just having a heroin addict dad is something you need to yeah. do. Yeah. And, so, and, like, is, do you think that contributes to, like, why I want to date, like, older guys? Sure, and yes. addict guys, too. You probably go for real. Why does that happen? That's, like, that's why, just where we're wired. Like, like, like sometimes, like, like you were saying earlier, if a if somebody is abused, they tend to want to be around abusers. That. Yeah, they tend to. No one really knows. Uh, they 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 try to make sweeping generalizations about it being people trying to make it right. You know, they love that oh, person yeah, that yeah. was their dad, and so this they go to somebody that's like that because that's what they love, and they're gonna make it good this time. But I think the reality is we just get that stuff wired into our brain. Just it just fits. And uh, that's what, what drives us. Our and that's why you see that the direction. that's why you see the cycles in the families because yeah. the girl gets abused by the father. She finds an abuser. He gets her pregnant. They mm-hmm. have a kid. Now that kid is screwed up for life, and right. it's just a big ass cycle. That's mm-hmm. why I hear Adam screaming. Yep. Adam, don't have kids. Yeah. Don't have kids, you why, morons. Tom is going to end that cycle. Tom, oh. Tom comes from a family of carnies. Right. Of carnies. <laughs> carnies. My mom's name's Connie. <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> but uh, no, it's crazy. Hey, kids are hard. They poop so much. <laughs> They so do. does my dogs. They do, but yeah, but you can eat your dog's poop. You can't eat human poop. You get sick. <laughs> <laughs> Except if they had corn the night before. I know. That's, that's crazy. Good. No, but you know what, though? Mm. I, uh, like my family, my, I, I had a pretty good <laughs> child life or whatever. But <laughs> the only bad thing was that my parents got divorced, whatever. But I could, just being a dad, though, all I want to do is be like the best dad ever. Like I really, really want to. And it's just weird to think that other people can be so irresponsible. No, well, yeah. But I you know it's it. I whatever. I guess it has to if do. If your with lady you're... is listening, she's got to be just crying. And it's so like joy right I want to grow a flower for every time I say I love you to my daughter. And like, no, I'm just joking. All right. Well, all then right. we have to we have to take a break. Is that all right? No. It's okay. Not. Tom Travis, David Anthony here. It's Box Car Racer. You can call and talk to him. One eight hundred love one nine one. And more love line coming up after this. Uh, oh yeah. Everybody now. Back in Love Line. Guys are coming back in the room. Are you supposed to play a song? Yeah, I was a just song? thinking that. No, cannot have. <laughs> not one you have a song ready, Anderson, have. so we can go to it in a minute? Try this beverage. Yeah? No, right, cool. cannot have. I'm not hey, sure which song it's going to be. What song are we playing? No, can you say it in my headphones when you get a chance? Boxcar Racers here. Uh, Striker in for Adam Corolla. Uh, in two days from now, Weezer will be in here. That should be cool. And then tomorrow night, uh, Sherry Appleby. From a new movie, Swim Fan? Swim Fan? Just know from Roswell. And from Roswell as well. All right, uh, we're going to hear another song from the guys from Boxcar Racer right now. Another? Where called... was the first one? We, we played, played it one. earlier. You were, you were taking we... a break. You were out masturbating like always. Uh, well, that's what I do. All right, we're going to play There Is. A song oh. called There Is. Fair All right, so here it is right now, Boxcar Racer. There Is on Loveline. Pills are kind I've given a lot of thought on 
this 13 hour drive I miss the grind in concrete where we sat past 8 or 9 And slowly finish laughing in the glow of our headlights I've given a lot of thought to the nights we used to have The days have come and gone, our lives went by so fast I faintly remember breathing on your bedroom floor Where I laid and told you but you swear you love me more Do you care if I don't know what to say? Will you sleep tonight? Will you think of me? Will I shake this off? Pretend it's all okay That there's someone out there who feels just like me There is Those notes you wrote me I've kept them all I've given a lot of thought of how to write you back this fall With every single letter in every single word There will be a hidden message about a boy that loves a girl Do you care if I don't know what to say? Will you sleep tonight? Or will you think of me? Will I shake this off? Yep, excellent. Boxcar Racer, that is called There Is. They're going to be playing smaller venues, going on tour in Tucson on the 23rd of October. Go to the website. Is it boxcarracer.com, you guys? They can find out all the dates. Yes, yes it is. If you live in Chicago, they'll be there November 9th. L.A., uh, the 23rd and 24th of November at the Wiltern. Um, are tickets on sale yet for that show? Do you know? I don't know. I don't think they are yet. I don't I, think so. I, I don't know if they are or not yet. Because when they are, I'm sure I'll be giving them away on, uh, yeah, on, on, on my radio show. You'll be giving part. them away um, and then some. And then some. If, unless someone wants to buy one or two for promotion. They can do that. Like Pepsi or something. For Pepsi? Yes. What do you mean for Pepsi? Uh, let's see. Diana. Ross? It's Diana. Okay. Yeah, I Deanna. beg your pardon. It's, this is Tomas. Okay. Hey, De <laughs> hey Diana. Excuse me. <laughs> We're going to have to put you on hold. Hold on. Okay. Let's go to uh, Kenny. What's up? What's up? You're 17. Yeah, man. What's up? Hey. What's up, Tom? Travis? Hello what's there. happening? Anthony, hey, what's going on? It's Anthony. David. And David. <laughs> there he said he got it. He got what's it. Up, guys? Yeah, you guys are in the band, too? <laughs> ah. Um, I don't know. I just really wanted to tell, like, Travis and Tom, and I guess David and Anthony, too, since you guys are part of Tom and Travis's lives, that you... I mean, stuff. Oh, yeah. And stuff. We get and stuff. Do. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We yes. try. It's nice to talk. You know what's cool about this show? You actually get to talk to your fan. You never really get to in a band. And not just from this city. They're from all over the place, yeah, actually. it's cool. Like Deanna. You're 18 from Riverside. Riverside. Yes. Deanna. 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 Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Um, okay, first I want to start by saying, Tom, I think you're a total sex symbol. <laughs> you know, let's not... Let's, I like the way you respond to that, time too. On <laughs> <laughs> let's no. Let, no, let's spend some time on this. And really, yeah. Let's really... Uh, I totally like fantasize about you. I think you're the key to orgasm. Oh, the key to that, huh? <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Hey, my dad said the same thing oh. about me. No, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it, hey. does, it is weird. <laughs> okay, my question Thank is you. for, I think, Travis or whoever can answer this. Um, I heard that you, guy, or, that you were in a band called Boxcar Racer before this band? Yes, I was. What's that about? And I was wondering, where'd you guys get that name? It was actually me and a friend named Alex Beretta. He's a Riverside boy, too. Uh, we had a band called Crawl with uh, some friends, and then we had a band called Boxcar Racer. And uh, I don't know. I was young, and I was just trying to start as many bands as I could. 
and uh, I love playing a band with Alex, but whatever. Like, I started touring with other people. Uh-huh. And uh, Alex is still around. He plays in a band called The Good Boys in Riverside, as we speak, like right now. And uh, and I was actually, he was one of the people I wanted to get together for Boxcar, but I couldn't locate him. But I, I, oh, I he's cool. around now. You know what's interesting about that name? When I uh, was writing a lot of the lyrics on this record, a lot of the lyrics are very biblical, like Revelations, End of the World kind of stuff. And there's a lot of people and a lot of books that have been written about World War II being the, the real-life scenario of the Book of Revelations and Armageddon and the Antichrist. And it's crazy. If you got into it, it's really gnarly about the, the coincidences. But the second bomb that was dropped uh, on Nagasaki Tom. Was, was from a plane. Tom. What? <laughs> you really want to say that? No, no. Well, no, it's interesting because I didn't know this. It was from a plane called Box Car, and it, w- it ended World War II. Huh. And uh, it was weird because our, you know, Box there Car goes racer. The and then we had, no, but it's not a bad thing, though. The war was, was ended by this, you know, whatever. I don't believe Yeah, I don't believe it is. That. I know. I didn't mean to, but uh, Anthony, your voice is so high. <laughs> but I don't know. It was interesting because I, I have so many songs on this record about, you know, revelations and all that Thank stuff. You, and I didn't know that till after the name was chosen. You pwn. Brian. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. What's up, man? You're 20 on Love Hunt. Uh, yeah, I just want to know if uh, uh, you guys if you guys are putting out uh, any more live CDs or anything like you did before. Yeah, like Bos- Boss Cars never put out a live CD. Oh, really? Yeah. And when is this? Oh. No, I said we never have. Like it doesn't oh, yeah. exist. Yeah. What? No, I'm talking about Blink. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is a boxcar thing. Yeah, this boxcar interview. But you oh, it- idiot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's messed up. All right. <laughs> you got. You- no, Brian, are you driving a car right now? No, a He's truck. He's cruising. A truck. A truck. He's yeah. loaded. But to answer his question, though, I mean, Blink yeah. might, but. Uh, yeah, that's for a different interview. We want to come back and talk about that later. I got some more things to say to kids about yeah. about Blink. About Blink at a different time. All right, Angela has a question about uh, your first band. No, Angela? Yeah. What's up? You're 18. Yeah, well, I was just wondering, okay, me and my boyfriend have been sexually active for a while now. And we first started out using condoms, but we stopped. And it's been a while now since we used them. But we've been using the withdrawal method. And I haven't gotten pregnant, and I was just wondering, like, if there could be something wrong with him or me. No, you've just been lucky. What's with? We've just been lucky. Meaning, coming, taking his penis out before he ejaculates. But there's a lot of (laughs) semen emitted prior to ejaculation, so it's called the pre-cum, doctor. Yes, indeed it is. And so, Angela, you're going to get pregnant. Technical term. It's so hard to go back after taking, um, like, using condoms, and then you and your old lady stop using them. Mm. Um, That's tough. It feels amazing. <laughs> it feels ridiculous. Well, it's really, um, it's interesting. It's dangerous. It's, din- it's interesting about how it feels. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that some. <laughs> it's juicy yet hot. It feels like jelly. Angela, like I jelly. beg it of does. you not to get pregnant. I beg of you, sister. Now, are you trying to? You're not married? No, I'm not trying to. Why don't you get on the birth control pill? Or take I a shot or a pad? What's up with the guy thing? Are we, a guy's going to be... Soon. What, do you, what is it going to be? Please I, don't make it painful. No, it's going to be... Are yeah. we going to get bloated, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid guys are going to say, yeah, yeah, I took my pill, I took it, and then... Hey, I don't want to get bloated and be moody. <laughs> 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 moody, moody. <laughs> All these boxcar songs are going to be like, you know, today the, the guy at the grocery store said something bad to me, made me mad or whatever. Am I going to have to like sit down with my friends and tell them all about my day and everything and just go, and then this guy, like, it was crazy, you know? Most of you are going to talk about your other friends to your friends. Yeah. Is it yeah. going to be a pill you have to take at a certain time every single day? I think hey, so. can it be an ointment? That would be great. Ugh. Everything should be an ointment. Preven- everything. Preventative, preventative ointments for everything. <laughs> If Angela, it's a, we will never get that thing. How about a suppository? It's right. How about a preventative ointment, Angela? What about something for you? <laughs> preventative uh, ointment. I like that. I've never thought about that. You've never thought about being on the pill? No. Have why, you been to a not? gynecologist before? No. All right, you have to get pelvic exams if you're sexually right. active. You understand that someone your age who is sexually active oh, is at risk for cervical cancer, right? How come? Mm-hmm. That's anyone, more than more than one partner beginning in sex at an early age, these are all risk factors for cervical cancer. For cervical cancer. cancer. And just being under 25 is a risk for cervical cancer. But look look about half have you, the, been, have you had a pelvic exam, Tom? Basically half the population no. out there has got the wart virus, and the wart virus is, seems to be what causes cervical cancer. Medicine. Really? Wart virus. Wow. A virus can cause cancer? Oh, yeah. What's That's a wart crazy. virus? Yeah, what? Wart. Travis, wart virus? show him what. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Warts. Really? Warts. Travis, yeah. let me see it. No, I've actually been pretty fortunate. Um... My words pop. Yeah. No, no, no. no. For um, 
I don't know. I've always been protected, though. I've been a safety boy, but, you know, yeah, whatever. Angela, you've got to get some it's contraceptive good. going here. And you you've got to. to get your regular health care done because it, it's very serious. And cervical cancer, once it gets going, is, is quite deadly. That's gnarly. Yeah. It's so gnarly. Angela, you seem like you're you're hearing this and it's going right out your ear, huh? No, I, on. I was just wondering because he thinks that there might that he might be sterile. Cause you're just Angela, lucky. You're lucky. You're going to get <laughs> pregnant. Call Planned Parenthood. Get an ex get an appointment. Go in there. Okay. You sound like you want a kid, mm -hmm. and believe me, you don't unless you're ready. Because I'm ready, and it's hard. One eight hundred two three zero Plan P L A N. All right. It's not what's what's funny. Get on about? the this pill. Go to funny. a doctor yeah. and get a pill. This is not funny. This is your life we're talking about here. It's not funny. It's screwing up our lives when she has the kid. That's oh, what it's going to do. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Angela. All right, thanks. Okay, bye. Good luck with that. Damn. Maureen. Yeah? What's up? You're 14. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, uh, Blink, you guys, uh, Boxcar Race, you guys rule. I love you guys so much. And um, I have a question about um, quitting smoking. Mm-hmm. And, like, what's the best way? It's the best thing for Travis, you. Travis, I just yeah. did. This is Travis. I quit smoking, like, <laughs> this is Travis a month. <laughs> no, a month and a week ago. And it was, um, I got super-duper sick. I had, like, bronchitis. And then uh, three days after, whatever, my bronchitis was over, I just I just quit. I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard. But quit cold turkey. Don't do any of that. I don't know. One of my boys got hypnotized. I don't I don't know. You could do it. You just got to be strong. Like, you know, you got to... Willpower. Yeah, willpower. You just got to make it. It's a poor excuse to smoke. Like, I yeah. said the same thing. Like, my favorite song came on. I wanted to have a cigarette. Like, <laughs> whatever. I was bummed out about something. Have a cigarette. What? Like, smoking's so bad for you. It's retarded. I don't... I've, yeah, it's I don't know. dumb. So bad. It is dumb. Well, it's she, like, just, she just got cut off. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> but Sorry. It, don't smoke. Too yeah. many uses of the S word. Yeah, too much. Too much. Drew, what's your advice for, for quitting since you're the well, addiction medicine guy? Yeah. It, it, the, the What I always ask my patients is, are they ready? Have you really made up your mind? Is there, have you set a date? Are you ready to go? Yeah, I got to the point where, like, you know, like you don't want to have your hands smell like cigarettes or clothes. You smell awful. Well, you it took me like kid. three times to quit. The to more kid times it. you try, the more likely you are to be successful. Yeah. I, I don't see any problem with the gums and the patches and stuff. It does seem to help people with some of the withdrawal symptoms. But you and know what it is, though, Dr. Drew, is that uh, people, like friends of mine, that go in and talk to doctors, and they'll tell them, don't quit cold turkey, and that just gives them an excuse don't to quit. keep smoking. No, you quit cold turkey with cigarettes. You pick a date, yeah, and that was, is it. You stop. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought, yeah, and that's absolutely. what I did. And I've absolutely. Been, yeah. there's, there's no such thing as a drug, really, you can taper successfully down from. It just it doesn't exist. Right. You know what that sounds like that makes me bummed out? Is this, There's so many doctors that I don't think are educated in so many different things. Right. They think they know everything. Like, if someone wanted to quit cigarettes, I think it would be rad if they talked to him, Dr. Yeah, Drew, because totally. he knows about it. Like, it's crazy. Like there's like there's like my for example my wife was anemic she didn't have enough iron mm. so she the doctor's like okay you gotta have like all these prescription iron pills and all this stuff and it, it totally messes you up and makes you sick if mm. you have it Constipated. yeah and she's just like okay I want to go I want to have this organic like all vegetable iron stuff and they're like no oh my god you can't do that or whatever you're gonna hurt your baby and then she went and did it and then everything was just perfect and they're like what are you doing what's you know it's just because they didn't know. You know, and it, it sucks to think that someone yeah. wants to stop smoking so they don't die. And he's like, "Don't do that." And yeah, they up. say, "Yeah." Well, it, I mean, Travis, have you been told that before? My doctor rules. My doctor at home, like, I don't go to his, I don't go to his office. I go to his house because mm -hmm. he hooks it up like that. But uh, I've been there and gone, like, "Man, should I quit smoking while I'm sick?" And he'll lean over and have a pack of cigarettes in his in his pocket. He goes, "Well, I'm a doctor. I still smoke." <laughs> like, you prick! Like, it makes it so hard for me hey. to quit smoking because you still the smoke. The gnarliest. You know? And you're a doctor. The gnarliest thing I've ever seen, though, is is our doctor uh, for our band. He's a he's a surgeon. He's a head neck throat surgeon, and he brings home these slides of operations of tumors that he takes out of the back of people's throats and heads from cigarettes. From cigarettes. Yeah. The gnarliest thing that you, you don't see this stuff like on TV and stuff. You just hear people going, yeah, you know, you get sick from smoking cigarettes. But dude, I've seen the pictures. It's the gnarliest thing I've ever seen. Never seen anything like that. Like, and and there is there there are other medicines help with the cravings, Zyban and things. If you really having trouble, that's stopping. supposed to work good. It does work. It does work. But the really important thing is deciding on a date and doing it. And there there are. Smoke enters programs, you know, sometimes help too. Have you had patients come to you that have been to other doctors and those doctors have been so off and you're like, what the hell are these guys doing? Well, people don't, uh, my profession and this country has a grave, grave misunderstanding about addiction of all types. I mean, people, it's amazing how little people know about it. And I was one of them. 
When I, I used to pat heroin addicts in the back, yeah, you get move out of that neighborhood, you'll be fine. <laughs> you know, it's, I totally had no effing idea what it was about, and I got very involved in that field. And now I can see how how little. For some reason, our culture wants it to make it everyone's problem. It really, it's their fault because they get strung out. What's the number one false rumor of someone that's addicted? Like, is it the that way they that quit? It, that or? it's a moral issue or that it's a weakness. Does yeah. it, does it could not be further from the reality. It's, it's something in your brain that's wired like that. It's a like brain that. disease. And, it. and it's, and it's you know, people that work with all the time, it is so obvious to us and it's so apparent how, how it's so bizarre, how we get it so wrong in the world. So we have All a right. break. Yeah, we do have to take a break. Uh, speaking of addicted, we're going to uh, talk about the gene and if you can skip it, if it's been in your family and all that, and more with Boxcar Racer and Drew and me, Stryker, coming up on Loveline. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. Yeah, we're back here on Loveline. Boxcar Racers here. Dr. Drew, it's me, Stryker. Uh, we only have a few more minutes, and there's a question here for uh, Anthony and David. Daisy. Um, yeah? What's up? You're on. You're 14. Okay, okay yeah. I had a question for Anthony and David. I want to know how, um, how it is for them to be on the band. How do they feel? It's awesome. Uh, it feels awesome? It's and, awesome. Uh, it's like, uh, man, it's like your dream coming true, you know? Uh, like whatever your 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 you want to do and succeed or whatever and you finally get to do that and okay. get the opportunity to do that it's really really cool how did you guys get hooked up with tom and or travis who knew who well, uh, I'm, well go ahead. dave's I like knew. tom's girlfriend and i'm like Anthony's tom's mine. Girlfriend. Yeah. yeah thanks for coming <laughs> basically yeah it's, <laughs> it's more of a physical relationship <laughs> than emotional yeah. Yeah. you're it's gay weird. we all we all grew up together <laughs> in different ways like tom and dave grew up together and me and anthony grew up together yeah um, and, and was they that grew the, up in, in the 619 we grew up in the 909 got it so. Well, we, yeah, we had some, um, we had gated communities. Yeah. We had Baskin <laughs> Robbins. And, uh, we right had lowriders and drive-bys. Do you have any more questions, Daisy? <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to you know, congratulate Tom. Tom Thank you. Tom Delonge, did I say that right? It's uh, yeah, actually, Delonge. it's <laughs> it's DeLong, but okay. I, that's only because they started mispronouncing it in my family. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be DeLonge or DeLonge. Oh, okay. Um, whatever, what have you. You can use whatever one you would oh, like. Oh, and I Ava. wanted to congratulate you for Ava. Thank you very Ava. much. She's gorgeous. Thank you. And I was going to ask you for a little favor. Yes. My birthday is in two weeks. Uh-huh. And I want to know if you could sing to me with your gorgeous, seductive, oof, dreamy voice. <laughs> oh. in now or in two what, weeks? What key do you want it in? Because that's really <laughs> how I work. Because no matter what you ask, it'll be either under or over. Yeah. yeah. Be sure. However you feel like. Going for you know it. I mean, like, you know, like happy birthday, Mr. President, kind of thing. Okay. Was it, is it your name's Daisy, right? Yeah. You want to do it right now? Sing of the rap. Sing of the rap. Go. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Go. Happy, happy birthday, Daisy. Daisy. Happy birthday to you. Wait, hold on. No, no. Hey. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. You're not special. Yeah, very good. How about Happy that, birthday. Daisy? Oh, thank you so much. Take Thanks it so. easy. I love you guys. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's get some more band stuff. Shannon. Yeah. Fifteen. Oh no, we just answered that question. How did you all meet? Okay. You promoted uh, that one. There we go. Yeah, Hopefully. that's right. I did promo this. Katie. Yeah. Drew is now salivating again Real because quick. of your question. You're well, nineteen. Real quick. You want to ask if the gene can skip? Uh, yeah. Well, it's fifty. Um, whether one or both parent have the gene, it's about fifty percent per child. The risk. What if the history goes back like hundreds of years? Are you North American Indian? Um, I'm Cherokee and yeah, Irish. That's the one exception. What are we talking? Is about? it really? Yeah. The gene for alcoholism addiction. That still goes back to my grandpa's. Yeah, mother, the though. Cherokee. The Cherokee family system is the ones where I've seen the penetration of, of the gene approaching more like a hundred percent. In other words, rather than being fifty-fifty like it is in most of the European descents. It's it's higher, and that you, well, you'll get families where all the siblings have it, kind of thing. So that North American Indian genetics is yeah, is a higher, that's particularly the funny Cherokee. Thing about it though, because all three of my sisters have the addiction. Gene well, and does I it? Don't. I understand. Then count your blessings. You didn't get it. Doesn't mean it has to be a hundred percent, but it tends to approach a hundred percent in that situation. Okay. What a right. white Caucasian dude have. Depends. Well, they have all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it's it, it's funny. It's it's it's. Populations that have been through multiple, multiple generations of severe military kinds of assaults 
That's where you see the alcoholism gene very highly Weird. present. And on that note, we're going to take another quick break. Yep. And when we come back, a couple more words with the guys from Box Car Racer on Loveline. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. Yes, we're back on Loveline. A couple more minutes here with Boxcar Racer. Uh, let's get some of the dates out that you're going to be playing real quick. I have them in front of me. 23rd, which could be the first date of the tour, but maybe not, of October. Going to be in Tucson at the Rialto. Uh, going to be in Austin on the 26th. Uh, where else? Chicago on the 9th. There's going to be dates before that as well, of course. Uh, the 16th of November, Salt Lake City. The L.A. shows, the 23rd of November and the 24th of November. BoxcarRacer.com has all the information. And uh, congrats, you guys, on everything so far. Thank you. Thank you guys you. are doing really well. Thank you very well. much. I don't know if it's bigger than you thought or what, but, uh, man, I really, really like the songs and the sound. And, and I can tell that there is a difference between the Blink sound and, uh, and the Boxcar Racer sound. Anthony and David, you guys are special young men. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're a good-looking dude. Thank you. <laughs> special young Travis, man. you're a fine young man also. Oh, thank you. Tom. Um, nah, I don't know what? you are. Asshole. You're good. Oh. <laughs> Dick. Prick. Okay, Prick. people, enough. Oh, my God. Uh, tomorrow on Loveline, Sherry Appleby is going to be here, and then the following night, Weezer is going to be here. Who's Sherry Appleby? Um, Roswell. Oh. Brown hair. Yes. She yes. started that Brown. Applebee's restaurant chain. <laughs> you guys are you guys are expanding expanding your horizons here. Yeah, exactly. So uh, have a good uh, have a good tour. Have a good time. Thank you. Uh, be safe, and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Drew, is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, for Doctor Drew. Whoa, 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 whoa. We what? need to stall for at least ten seconds. Oh, we did. Oh, okay. With the clock is here. It's not. A, oh, by the way, just to give you guys some more info, uh, who broke the clock in here? David? Dave. Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave from Boxcar Racer broke the he clock. He thought there was a PB and J inside of it. I <laughs> <laughs> think that we're in a big. That's a joke from earlier. He's, addic- he's addicted. He's addicted to skinny. It's a really tiny room in here. It's a very small room. It is so here. hot in hair right now. You her. guys don't even know her. <laughs> Where's your sweat, her, Travis? <laughs> Have fun with your new lady. She's better I than will. the old one, apparently. Apparently. As as everyone said. All right, yeah. that's gonna do it. Boxcar Racer strike for Adam. Andrew saying, see you later. Uh, my penis tastes great. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.